Hey, what's going on, everybody? Isaac here with Civil Engineering Academy. Uh, I'm excited to share another podcast episode with you. And today I have an awesome guest. Her name is Shannon Baranek. And she actually was a course member of the Ultimate Civil PE Review course, which is the course that we created, Civil Engineering Academy. You can go check it out, civilpereviewcourse.com. But she de details her whole experience into civil engineering, including getting all the way up to getting her PhD, leaving it all, going to be uh, into the technology world, uh, working for video games, which is awesome, <laughs> and switching back to civil engineering, and uh, working on getting her PE and has finally uh, passed her exam. Uh, she took our course, was able to get through it, and she details this whole experience. She has a lot of pointers, including uh, what you should be studying from uh, and just a lot of really great advice uh, regarding to the PE exam itself. So I really enjoyed the interview with Shannon. She has a really fun personality. In fact, I, I detail this in, in there, but we connected through our fa private Facebook community, and she just got a really fun attitude in the comments that she posts. And, and so I thought it would be fun to bring her on and talk about this. So she currently works for uh, a public works uh, director. She started back in October of 2020. She's been able to move up in that company as she's earned her PE, um, but she was able to pass the PE um, and she was scheduled for April, but because of COVID, it got canceled, but she was able to pass, uh, when they rescheduled that. So she talks about how taking this exam with COVID measures, how that, what it, that is like, um, and a lot of other details. Um, she also has had some serious health challenges, including lupus, and she details those and isn't, um, shy about sharing all those details. So there's just a lot in here, um, that I think you will enjoy. Uh, I really enjoyed working and uh, interviewing Shannon, so I hope you appreciate it. Reach out to her. She leaves her contact info at the end. Let her know. Thank her for the interview. And if you have any questions about being a transportation engineer, she's a go-to source for it. So anyway, long intro. It's going to be a good one. It's coming right up. All right. What's going on, Shannon? Thanks for joining me on the Civil Engineering Academy podcast. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, this is going to be exciting. So um, I guess, you know, people want to get to know you a little better. And one of the main ways we connected, obviously, is that you were a member of our course, the Ultimate Civil PE Review course. And that's how we connected. But your comments on Facebook were always eye-catching and very funny. And so uh, I think one of those comments is that you needed, we needed more women testimonials and things like that. And I was like, well, hey, let's let's connect and get on get on the podcast. Let's hear your journey. So I thought, um, you know, I think you're you have a very fun attitude and I think it's good to sometimes take some of this stuff lightly because, you know, people taking the PE can be very, very serious, especially if they're repeat takers and can get them down quite a bit. So I guess as we begin, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how you got into the civil engineering world? Okay, so I was uh, born and raised in Illinois. My grandfather on my mom's side was actually a civil engineer. Um, he did a lot of those Chicago expressways and highways and things that if you get stuck in traffic, like, why is this built like this? So, um, so it kind of runs in the family. Uh, since him, I was the only person on that side to really go to college, and I had no idea it was going to be civil engineering or um, psychology. And at the time, I said, I don't want to be in college for eight years. Well, <laughs> it turns out I was in college for far more than eight years because I did multiple degrees at the university, um, including going ABD on a PhD. So uh, it's funny how awesome. life works out. <laughs> Wow. So you got all the way up into the PhD. Um, you were working on that, I imagine. And um, what what changed? What what happened there? So I have lupus and I'm not afraid to talk about it. It's an autoimmune disease. And uh, when I turned 21, I had a massive uh, attack, basically attacked my joints. I uh, got sick, got over that one. Years later, when I'm doing my master's degree, it attacks my kidneys. I get down to like 25% kidney function, mm -hmm. uh, almost need a transplant dialysis. It was, um, my doctor was awesome, saved, saved my kidneys. I ended up with three joint replacements in the process and a ton of medical bills, obviously. Uh, so being a PhD student pays very little, even in engineering. I was making 
18 grand a year, which is not much. Mm. So I got, I got into tech. I started working for a video game company uh, called Zynga. I'm sure everyone remembers when their, their Facebook feed was full of help my cow pet, you know, pet it, whatever. Yeah. You you can blame me for that. Words Uh, with friends. Yes. (laughs) So I worked for them for a little while, uh, kind of bounced around other tech companies because tech is not a stable field. Um, And I actually got to the point where my advisor kind of disappeared on me. So I couldn't finish my PhD and the university was less than helpful. I don't want to talk bad about them because it is a good university, but I didn't get a lot of help. And so I was, you know, kind of working video games, not making that much money. It was kind of getting terrible. Like it wasn't like the, it wasn't what I wanted to do with my life. So all of a sudden one day I was like, I'm going to go back to being an engineer. And I applied at a local company that uh, was here in town. I got a job within two weeks of applying and haven't looked back. So Wow. That's awesome. So I guess take us back. How long were you in the video game industry? And then how long have you now been working in the civil engineering uh, world? Oh. It's been a few years now. Yeah. The one I worked at the most, uh, I started there in 2012 and stayed there almost five years. And before that, couple years in different places so but i went back to engineering july of 2017 so wow well that's awesome so fast forward then to today what are you doing now i am the sole engineer besides the public works director for the city of urbana i when i started we had 12 people in our department and we now have five so Hmm. we've had a lot of attrition that we haven't replaced due to budget reasons and probably other reasons that I don't know because I'm not an admin. So, uh, COVID maybe I don't know. The city I COVID? do have to say, the city's been actually really great on COVID. I mean, we've been we have COVID protocols. We're getting actually testing that's going to be in our building. So, like every day you come in and get your COVID test. Oh, not, not every day, like twice a week. So, okay, well. Wow, so you have such an interesting journey from medical things going on to your experience going to your to the university to your work experience. Um, so now you're in civil engineering. You you've realized, uh, I guess, that you needed to pass your exams. Um, I imagine you passed your FE in college. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, right before I started my master's degree. So. Excellent. And then you jumped into the PE. So. Um, tell us about your experience with the PE exam. What was your mindset? What was the challenges you you were facing? Well, I took the FE in end of 2001. So I hadn't really done a lot of things you'd see on the PE for quite a while. And I, I like recognized that there's almost, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I recognized there was a lot of stuff that I was not going to remember, like, like trusses. Mm. I, I was terrible at trusses in college and I'm like, this is going to be an exam. Uh, so I actually, I knew right away I was going to need a refresher course. Um, so I started looking around and I found yours. And I do have to say, I honestly don't think without a refresher course, I would have passed. Like, regardless of what refresher course I took, uh, that 20 year gap was uh, very forgetful in terms of all of the stuff that on the PE. It is helpful. At first, when I was studying, I was like, this sucks. I hate it. Why would I ever study this? I'm not a structural engineer. I don't want to be a structural engineer, but um, it did help. And I'm actually very grateful because I don't know if I could be a repeat test taker. Like, I honestly don't know. (laughs) Well, don't get discouraged for those that are. Uh, You just get back on the horse and do it again, you know? I I know someone who took it 17 times. Oh, did they pass? Yes. She is now a PE. Oh, there you go. I didn't know you could do it that many times. I didn't uh, either, but that's, I mean, she'll tell people too. She's not like afraid to tell you. That's awesome. Well, I love it when people are uh, willing to own that and just kind of say, look, I struggled with this. I mean, some, some engineers just are not great test takers. Um, you have to learn what the NCES, how they do it, what they're testing you on. And really that time management's kind of a, a real key when you're taking these exams. So. Um, yeah, I did. You offered like I think you had like a little cheat sheet of like here's some tips, and one was like get a calendar and like map out your studying. And I actually mm-hmm. I did that for when I thought I was going to take the test in April before they cancel it. Um, 
I didn't do it again after that, but because I kind of knew my pattern at that point, but actually sitting down and writing out, I'm going to study this module this week, this module next week did actually help. Great. So what did you like most about the course? I really, I did like the video lectures because it did help kind of focus on um, the important things like the geotech stuff. Geotech is such a wide range of things you can cover and actually just sitting down and going through like soil mechanics, you know, all of that step-by-step was very helpful. So Awesome. Do you feel like you got good support? I was curious if you feel like you got supported. Uh, the group was great. The, the one, once you buy the course, like the little private one, mm -hmm. uh, very helpful. There was a uh, one guy in there. John Pickles is his name. Um, Shout out he, to John. He was, <laughs> he gave me a packet of test uh, sample test problems and he's, he was very helpful helpful. I mean, not just me, other people. He, so he was great. Um, John's very active in that group and yes. I'm, I'm thankful for it because he, he gets in there and answers a lot of questions. So it's great to have him in there. And that's really why I built that um, as part of this, because I want community of like-minded individuals taking this exam or even those that have struggled that can come in and help other people, either your first time or your fifth time or your 17th time taking the exam uh, because you know once you get it done uh, we kind of all are in that same mindset same boat and we I think we can pass it on try to help other people when they are going through the exact same same thing so I'm glad that helped you well it's funny my old boss uh, before he left to go to a different city he I told my I had passed and he goes what did you think of the essay questions and I go the what he's like there was no essay questions. I was like, no, it was all multiple choice. So apparently in like the, you know, 15 years since he took it, the test had also changed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's changed a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, these things continue to involve evolve. Um, when I took it, it was, you know, still paper-based obviously, but um, at that time you could change which depth section you wanted to take on the fly because they gave you the book, you know, and it was like this thick of all the depth exams. And so you could write in a different exam if you wanted to, you just needed to change it on your, on your sheet. So you didn't have to like pre-register and tell, tell NCES which depth exam you're getting. And that was the only exam you got. You got all of the exams and uh, I mean, normally you would prepare for just one of them, but if you thought it looked horrible, you could switch on the fly if you wanted to. Uh, so that's when I took it. Um, Obviously, it's going computer-based in 2022, similar to the FE. Do you, what do you think about that? What are your thoughts on this exam going computer-based? Would you recommend trying to get it done in 21? Or if somebody's debating, just waiting till 2022 to go computer-based? Any, any thoughts around that? If you haven't taken it already, like if it's your first time, I'd say stick with doing the paper one. Because you've been preparing for that, like all the NCES stuff that you can buy or the practice problems or your course focuses on like that version. So since I don't have any idea what the computer-based one will look like, um, I would say, yeah, definitely your first time, stick with the paper one. Don't wait. But if you have taken it multiple, multiple times, it might be a better option for you. They might, it, it might be a better mindset. Different people take tests differently. So it, like I took the GRE for grad school on the computer. And that was far different than the paper prep I had done because it had just switched over. Mm -hmm. uh, but I enjoyed taking it on the computer. It, it was much more flexible in where you could take it, when you could take it. So I don't know if the PE is going to be that way. Like, are they going to open up more dates? Do you know? Yeah. So it's going to be a year round exam, just like the FE. And they'll have their own reference manual. So um, that's the only book that you'll have access to. So it will be closed book exam. And so the thought there is, you know, maybe they're only going to ask questions that are related to that book. Um, that's typically not always the case because you're not going to be able to find theory, you know, in those books, which theory problems are a huge part of the exam. I don't know if you ran into that on your own, but... I always say that people are going to experience probably 10 to 15 questions in the morning and the same in the afternoon. So, you know, that's, that's a big chunk of the exam that's straight up theory questions. And 
if you can't look that up in a reference manual, typically I would point people to like a textbook that they maybe have brought. You could try to look in the index real quick for a keyword or something, but that's uh, that's my understanding. Yeah, so. but for some that might be helpful because like transportation, I had, I'm not ashamed to admit it, I had two suitcases full of stuff that I brought with me. Nice. But the transportation <laughs> books, so like the highway capacity manual is three volumes. Like a lot of our books are just big. Um, mm -hmm. The serum is big. And so if you don't have to schlep all that stuff with you or know where some obscure thing is in the third volume of a book you haven't looked at for 10 years, um, it, it may actually be very helpful. So Yeah. And I actually think, depending on which depth exam, they're, they are providing um, a PDF copy of, of the standard, I think, that they're calling out. So um, at least that's my understanding. Um, I actually interviewed Tim Miller, who is the director of those exams for the NCES, and he talked about this exam going computer-based. It was a fun interview. If anybody wants to check that out, go check it out. Tim Miller. Um, but anyway, let's get back to your own journey. Uh, what do you think, say, uh, you wish you had known when you started this whole journey getting ready for this PE exam? Okay, so I'm a person who researches things by nature, hence why I spent so much time in grad school. So mm -hmm. I wasn't really surprised or felt lacking in anything. I pretty much researched the ever living get out of what I needed to do beforehand. Um, so it definitely helps. Like, make sure you know, say if you're taking the paper one still, um, read all the tips from whatever course you're taking, uh, read the tips from the NCES. That really was a great jumping off point for where. I need to direct myself. So, That's and great. for the for the NCS, if it say you're taking transportation, they give you a list of books. Um, find all of those if you can. I didn't use a couple of them, but I did beg, borrow, and steal all of the ones I could get my hands on, and convince work to buy um, a couple of new ones that we needed to update volumes on. So. <laughs> Uh, I agree with you. I when I, when I was taking the exam, my work paid for review material, and I know a lot of employers out there want you to get your PE, and they're willing to help support you in doing that. Um, so yeah, I agree. Beg, borrow, still those uh, standard books that you need to bring with you to the exam. Transportation is definitely one that requires a, a lot of material. Structures is up there too. And so I, well, I think that scares people, but if you are in those in your workplace, uh, you know, that's kind of what you want to do, you know, get to know that material a little better and spend some time studying that stuff, um, is going to help you in the long run. So because like I do a lot of traffic stuff. So anything MUTCD related, I, there was some theory questions on that. I only looked up to double check myself, but I pretty much was like, I could answer that without even thinking. I'm like, I do this every day. Mm -hmm. But then when it, it came to some, there was a question on there that I'm pretty sure was one of those ones they kicked out because it was so complicated that it had to use four charts and different chapters out of the green book. I was like, there's no, I took a wild guess. I ran out of time and just marked B. I was like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what you do. Um, what are your thoughts on the theory questions? How do you help somebody that? is surprised or doesn't isn't prepared for those so depending on the question like they often wouldn't use words that an actual engineer in that field would have called the thing <laughs> like I, so be like you're gonna have to do a little brain work on like what are they actually asking because i'm like i would have never called it x i would have called it y and so it's they do try to trip you up a little bit on those yeah you got to put on the thinking cap a little bit um, you know, spend some time, just reread those problems. If you do have a good textbook, you know, sometimes you can pull out those keywords and go brush up on it real quickly. But for the most part, I think, I mean, on these theory problems, you're expected to just read through the problem and use really good engineering judgment in trying to solve that, that particular problem. But because, because time management is such a big deal, it's hard to spend a little bit of time looking through books. But if you can do it, you know, go for it. Um, cool. Uh, what's a, a, a common myth about the PE or civil engineering that maybe you want to debunk? <laughs> well, so I, you, you had showed me kind of this question ahead of time, and I was trying to think of this one, and 
honestly, the only thing that came into my mind was a joke. It's, it's a dad joke that someone told me back in college. They, the quote, it goes, what's the difference between a mechanical engineer and a civil engineer? They build the build the bombs we build the targets <laughs> <laughs> there you go so but civil engineering like it it's it's such a wide field so like you're gonna have your structural engineers who um in college they were always like the the hoity-toity ones like oh i'm smarter than everybody you had the environmental guys who are like the, the sandal wearing hippies who had their own floor in the building and then then you had us in transportation who were like i just want to graduate and this is probably the most middle of the road thing I can find. <laughs> so. You're probably right. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good way to put it. My my um, old boss, my old boss was an environmental engineer, so he knows full full well that I uh, make you know fun of his sandal wearing hippiness. <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny you say that because when I was looking for jobs as an intern, I had worked at a call center that was paying for my schooling, which is like the big reason why I even worked at a call center is because they were paying for my college. But it got to a point where I needed to find an internship. Well, the internship that I found was from a buddy that worked for a utility and it was for an environmental internship. And the only thing I knew is that it paid well. <laughs> so I was like, let's do it. And so I, I interviewed, they took me as an intern, which was very flexible and it was nice. But I quickly realized that I didn't like to write pages and pages and pages of reports and <laughs> it just i don't know i just didn't fit my my personality my style so um it was a great job and at the time i think environmental was like one of the highest paying like positions in civil engineering it might still be um i haven't looked that up in a while but anyway yeah i i kind of agree with you there <laughs> i didn't i uh i didn't follow that path necessarily um, in fact, I remember in college, I, there was this uh, presentation in a senior uh, design class, and it was on transmission design. And nobody ever like gave it a second thought, but for whatever reason, that, that stuck in my, my head, which is why I ended up where I was. So I started to I'd work in the utility world, starting to do uh, transmission design work, so structures and foundations and uh, pulling in wires of various sizes and it's a it's a unique field and uh that's that's how i how i ended up where i am today so anyway i think that's funny yeah i think you're right on that uh how about some good advice what's some good advice you've received or uh best advice you've received anything along those lines best advice um or advice you'd like to share with others take your time. I mean, this goes for just the test or just even work, like, especially work, you're going to find yourself where um, you're short staffed and you got to get a project done, but don't rush it. Like, do like, do stop and look at what you're doing. Um, Cause it will help with the stress. It'll help with um, knowing what you're doing. And if you do make a mistake, um, own it. Uh, my current boss, the new public works director is very much, he's like, we're all going to make mistakes. Uh, we're going to learn from them. I'm not going to hold it against you. Um, be confident. It's, you know, life happens. So it's, it's not, um, don't be afraid. So. Yeah, everyone, I agree. Everyone makes mistakes and it actually looks better for you, for you. If you can own the mistake, it shows that you are willing to take personal responsibility with stuff. I can't, I mean, I work with a lot of people and it frustrates me when I work with contractors or anyone else that doesn't take ownership or willing, like they want to help solve the problem, but it's very difficult to like get them to, to, to own the problem. <laughs> anyway, I, that's very good advice. Very good advice. Um, going back to the course, why, why would you recommend the course, the ultimate civil PE review course to somebody? I found it a very well-rounded course. Um, so if you look at the NCS breakdown of questions, it's weirdly structures heavy. Um, there's like two transportation questions. I'm like, we exist. Um, yes. So <laughs> having the different modules and the different sections um, really helped take me out of the transportation world and to focus on studying the other aspects that I, like I'm never gonna build a truss in my life. 
not going to happen. Um, but it's on the, it may be on the test. I actually did not have a single trust question on my version of the exam. I was wow. ready to go. I had, I had that printed out <laughs> from your examples with like tabs. I uh, didn't need it, but it was good to study. So yeah. you were covered. Yeah. We had you covered. Yeah. What I like about it is like, you know, I built this to cover the, the specifications and I will have to redo this when those specs change. Um, obviously, and I try to keep up with that, which is very hard. Um, but if we can keep you up to date with what the specs are doing and not anything extra or outside of that, then I feel like that's the best way to prepare you. Um, plus, we, we try to give you a lot of practice problems, whether that's in video form or in the lectures, uh, including the practice exams. So uh, what, what do you recommend for people about practice exams and problems? Once you go through all the modules, get as many practice problems, tests you can get your hands on. Um, but be careful because not all of them are created equal. So mm -hmm. I found the six minute solution ones and the PPI stuff very hard. Like I had done the NCS test, felt really good and was like, well, I need more questions, did those. And I felt like Patrick the Starfish with a board nailed in my head. Um, so I was like, and I actually asked in the group, I'm like, are these? hard like what is wrong with me and they're like no those are super hard um save those as a last resort and that's when uh john pickles gave me his giant pile of stuff and that really helped <laughs> so <laughs> that's awesome yeah i i totally i agree with you that um not all exams are equal um and ppi is kind of notorious for making their problems much harder than the real deal and maybe that's to prepare you or get you in a mindset that, wow, this is going to be really hard. And then you get there and maybe it's a little easier and you're surprised by that. I don't know. But um, I have always felt like maybe their stuff was more helpful for your depth portion because the depth stuff can get difficult. Um, but if anybody needs a resource, you can go, you know, use our link, civilengineeringacademy.com slash PPI. You can check out with the code CIVAC and you can get 15% off if you need a resource there. I do have and to say. And I agree. Yeah. They're, um, they had a transportation manual um, that was like maybe an inch thick. That was very helpful. I did actually use that a lot for studying and on the test. So That's great. Yeah, they. I mean, they have great resources, um, you know, to help prepare you. A newcomer on the scene is actually School of PE, and I'll be doing some reviews of their books here shortly but um they're they're produced a, a breadth manual and also a depth manual uh, recently the depth stuff is only for their course members right now but that will change in the future but if anybody's interested in checking those out uh you can go to civilengineeringacademy.com slash s-o-p-e and go check that out as well so uh, yeah get lots of resources and even in, in our course i encourage people if you run out of problems to do go get some more whether that's on and, and uh um you know whether that's on amazon grabbing a bunch of exams uh or otherwise just continue to solve problems and that applies to people even if you have failed the exam uh you got to find more problems different problems to keep you going you know so um all right. Any other books you would personally recommend to the CEA community to help them on the PE? Uh, the Gatswami book helped studying. I didn't use it at all during the test, even though I had it with me, but it, it did. So I had, I used the CIRM as my base book because like all your lectures reference that. So that, I mean, I was very familiar with it. And there was just a couple things that um, Gatswami explained differently. It wasn't, I mean, not like your, not like your description is wrong or the CIRM is wrong. It just, for some reason, his description of a certain thing, and I can't think of an example off the top of my head, um, clicked better in my mind. Um, mm -hmm. So using that during studying helped a lot. So, Yeah, I agree. Um, in fact, I refer people to that because um, he's very clear. Goswami says this is for his, uh, an AM and PM. And sometimes I found that that filled in some gaps on my PM exam where the CIRM didn't quite hit it, and for whatever reason. Um, I do wish the CIRM was updated in some categories, but um, they haven't done that yet, maybe one day. But like for me, I took the geotech depth exam, and a seismic material wasn't really in the CIRM, so I had to rely on Gaswami. Gaswami had some stuff on that, so I used his for that, that, that material. So yeah, I think that's a good 
you make a good point there. Good book. Go check it out. It's called the, I think it's called the All in One uh, something. <laughs> I think I got it here. I, All I in sold, One Civil Engineering book. I sold mine to another member of the group, so I don't have mine anymore. Oh, you're like, I- I'm done with this. <laughs> I, I kept I kept my serve and I kept the PPI transportation one, but I got rid of a lot of stuff because I'm like I'm not taking this test ever again. Um, so hopefully it'll help somebody else pass the test. Excellent. Well, now that you've passed and you're working on getting your license, have you noticed it's a challenge to actually get the license, or what? What are you running up to now? I uh, I had to nail down my old professor to get some experience. Otherwise, I'd have to wait till June to get the full four years. Um, well, my master's degree counts as one year, which is great. Um, mm-hmm. But in Illinois, at least, I don't know about other states, uh, your PhD coursework does not count unless you actually get a degree. So I spent years doing it. doesn't count for anything. Uh, so, But I did do some work for the same professor that was not PhD related. And uh, a member of the Illinois board used to work for the city. And I contacted him and he said, we can work a year of that. Like it's not, it wasn't education related. So... It should count. Uh, I had to get his paperwork in the mail. That literally showed up yesterday. And so I'm going to get my ducks in a row, figure out the most convoluted application I've ever experienced in my life, um, <laughs> and then mail that off to the Illinois board. So, Did you have to take an ethics exam at your <laughs> DOPOL, your Division of Professional Licensing? Was that we part of not, your... Yeah. Nope. Don't have one in Illinois, at least. Oh, I okay. think... I think maybe if you mess up, you might have to take one. And I do know you have to take one if you try for cross-state licensing. So if I wanted Indiana, I'd have to take one. So, Yeah, I, so I don't think people realize this sometimes because your mind is so focused on taking the PE exam. You kind of forget that you really need to check in your division of professional licensing because as part of the application process, you have to have ex- the experience. and And having the experience doesn't just count with anybody it has to be with someone that has a pe license and can write off on your experience and so i think sometimes that also catches people off guard when they're applying for these things so keep a good record of what you've been doing uh keep the contacts of people that have licenses that know what you've been doing too because that's going to help you a lot (laughs) in the long run because you're going to move jobs, you're going to go somewhere else, and you have to reach out to some of these guys in the, in, that you worked with in the past to figure that out. So, good point. Um, anything else on that you want to hit? Um, definitely the make sure you're working under a PE. So, like my last year at the city of Urbana, I thought was going to count because the, I was working under the guy appointed interim city engineer. He's a licensed PE. Um he refused to sign my paperwork Hmm. and it wasn't because he thought I was a bad engineer or didn't do the work. It's because of some political BS and he was, he insisted that he was never my supervisor and he didn't actually oversee any of my work. And I was like, that's a terrible thing to admit to somebody. Um, So that's when I had to go dig up my old professor and get him to sign for a year. So, wow. Yeah, I there's that too. You're going to run up to people that you might think you could get a signature from to sign off on your experience, and then they say no to you. Um, that that does happen. I've seen it in my own workplace, and so things like this happen. Uh, you know, make make good relationships and make sure you can get the that experience. Yeah, yeah but that that one unfortunately we didn't have a public works director who was a licensed engineer because I actually asked the Bill Moy board what do I do when someone says no? Like what? And they asked if there was anyone in the chain of command who had a PE. I'm like, we're a small city. Uh, no, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. We're not going to find anybody. Well, you got it. So you're going to be the PE now and people are probably going to look to you for that same thing in the future. Yeah. And even though I've just like just passed the test, haven't got my actual license number yet. Um, I've actually gotten a lot more people like, hey, you know what you're doing now. I'm like, I knew what I was doing before. (laughs) (laughs) It changes a lot, doesn't it? Once you get that. uh, It it, it does come with a nice pay raise too, which will be nice. Oh, good. Yeah, that's awesome. Some people don't experience that pay raise immediately. 
Uh, but it sounds like you were able to move up quickly in the company you're in. Which well, yeah, awesome. I mean, when everybody quits, <laughs> it's kind of... It's like your, your shoe in. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that. Um, you'll be uh, stamping stuff, and that's that's great. Yeah, my tech, he says I need to get a, a stamp that's like a big wood-handled metal thing, like a judge's gavel. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I can, but I'll look into it. <laughs> oh man you gotta start a stamp company you can make some fun ones i guess <laughs> oh that's good stuff well is there any other advice you want to share with people to either taking this course or taking the pe that that you wanted to touch on um so right now if you're going to take it well the january one just happened if you're going to take it in the spring there's probably still gonna be covid precautions practice your exams with your mask on um it was uh, not bad during the exam because they actually had the air conditioner down, so you didn't get hot. But having a mask on for eight hours, because I took the exact the full time, it does get old. Like my nose got raw from just like looking up and down at the books from the mask mm -hmm. rubbing on it. So get used to wearing that mask. That was actually something I had posted about in the group. Was like I don't know if I can wear a mask for eight hours. So <laughs> I'm an engineer, not a doctor. Yeah. It's a lot of moisture going on there, too. <laughs> uh, I know oh. a lot of people were worried about that. And it sounded like, at least in our support group, that um, at the end of the day, people found it to be a little more quiet or something. Like, it wasn't as bad as they thought it was going to be and could focus on the exam. So um, I would say, hopefully, don't let that scare, scare you from taking it. But, um, you know, be safe and... I think the NCES tries to do everything they can to make this safe, which is why they opened up a whole another exam period, which was in January, which is an oddball time for people. And uh, even in our group, some people are taking it in January, and it's like, what is this about? <laughs> and it's because they opened up a few places for it. So, yeah, good advice. And also, for the love of Pete, do not bring your cell phone into the exam. Our, our our proctors were nice and let the five people who had their cell phone leave it up at the table um <laughs> but it will get, get it could get you kicked out depending on your proctor so leave it in your car so. yeah you had a nice one i specifically remember people getting kicked out because they brought in their cell phone <laughs> that sucks waste of money don't do and, that and no, yeah and no fitbits i was my fitbits my watch and like right before the exam, NCS was like, you can't have any Fitbits. And I was like, I got to go to Walmart and buy a watch then. So <laughs> They banned Fitbits? I didn't even know that. Yep, no Fitbits, no any kind of exercise tracker, nothing. So Yeah, you're not tracking your steps in this exam. <laughs> I don't know what you're, are you displaying a, an equation? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Get rid of those. Well, good deal. Did you bring any snacks with you into the exam? I did not. I had, uh, I'm a gum chewer. Uh, so I, I actually had like two little sticks of gum laid out on my table and they didn't have any objection to that. So. Well, good. I found there's no time to really eat or snack on stuff. Like you are so into this exam. Uh, I didn't have, I felt like there wasn't time to break out a five minute, um, break and start pounding a Snickers bar or something. <laughs> I could just, yeah. I, I didn't find that was necessary. Yeah. I mean, maybe for lunch you could pound something, but yeah. yeah anyway. I had a bottle of water. I took maybe two sips out of the, in the morning and two sips out of in the afternoon. And it was like a, a two liter bottle of water. I'm like, this is pointless. So. <laughs> yeah. So you're not going to use a lot of food probably on the exam, no. but you know, you can, if you need it, get a little sugar rush. We did have one guy who, from his books, I think was taking water resources. And I don't know if he was the smartest person in the world or just trying to see what the exam was like. Cause he left probably halfway through the morning and then an hour before the evening ended. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe he just guessed B and yeah. that was it. 25% chance of passing. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, is there any, um, this is a fun question I ask, but if you had all the resources and knowledge in the world, is there something you'd like to be a part of in the world of civil engineering or to help other people in some way? I don't know. Like, 
I, I really like doing transportation, so thinking about doing something else, it's kind of weird. Like, I just, I like what, I, and I also like building stuff where I can see it. So, like, I build stuff in the town that I live in. Um, so, I mean, I've, you know, my hands have been in the concrete in the road I just built, and I can be like, I built this and pointed it. Much to my husband's chagrin, he's like, you point that out every single time we drive past it. <laughs> so. Is your name, in, you know, written in the concrete? <laughs> No, because we actually have a city ordinance where if names or any kind of defacement goes in the concrete, the contractor has to rip it out and replace it. So Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So that's, well, that's still good advice. If you like to get your hands and see what you're building, civil engineering is a great place to be. And uh, uh, you're automatically helping the world just by being a civil engineer because we help the world with a lot of things and a lot of people don't notice it but it goes from the water you drink all the way to the roads you drive on and everything in between so stop um, lights street lights yeah yeah sidewalks yeah all your fun multi-use paths sorry i'm i'm listing up <laughs> all the projects i'm currently working on so diving into that transportation yeah well shannon this has been fun is there any last piece of guidance that you could share and how can people get a hold of you if they have questions or want to dive into transportation engineering or questions on the pe so take your time enjoy life like studying is awesome study hard do your problems but also take time to go outside um pet your dog and just don't stress so hard that you get in your own head and and basically screw yourself over do take time for life that um that really helps i built a road project while i was studying and so being outside all day gave me a great time to not study um and then if you're in the group uh, you can tag me shannon baranic uh, or you can uh, send me a facebook message um if you want you can even email me my city address um it's really long it's slbaranek at urbanaillinois.us. And Illinois is spelled out because we can't do anything short at the city. Um, so, awesome. Yeah, it's, and I, I mean, I can help you on transportation stuff, but if you come to me with like an environmental water pump question, sorry, I'm, no, I'm terrible at those. Happening. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you've given plenty of ways to contact you. That's awesome. And for those that aren't part of the group, go join up. Go to uh, civilpereviewcourse.com. You can go check out the course uh, that we created. Uh, it's called the Ultimate Civil PE Review Course, and it comes with lots of fun stuff, lectures, problems, exams, uh, private support. So uh, go check it out. Anyway, thanks, Shannon, for being on. Really do appreciate it. Um, I think a lot of people are going to love this one, so thank you. Yep, thank you, too. I look forward to seeing people in the group again. So. All right. <laughs> See you later. Bye. What's up, everybody? I hope you enjoyed that interview with Shannon. She was great. Re please reach out to her if you can. Uh, give her a thank you. And if you have any questions, reach out to her as well. Uh, like I said in there, if you need access to a course, go join us at civilpereviewcourse.com. The course includes lecture modules, uh, tons of video practice problems, I detail everything. Uh, I try to refer out of the uh, CIRM, the equations to use, so you can follow along with that as well. Uh, we also have practice exams for your breadth and depth exam, tons of cheat sheets, including a homework planner so you can plan your studies, and an ultimate equation reference guide that includes all the equations that you need out of the CIRM in a handy-dandy just book right in front of you, uh, and lots of other cheat sheets as well. You also get private uh, Facebook support, which is actually probably one of the biggest deals of this course because support is huge and uh, the community we have built is awesome, just as Shannon mentioned. So go check it out if you need it, civilpereviewcourse.com. We look forward to helping you out on your PE. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks, thanks Shannon for joining and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Felt like Patrick with a starfish nailed to her forehead. <laughs> <sighs> you gotta throw in some uh spongebob when you can because it just makes life better so go spongebob and patrick see ya so